able to open the event formally, I'll ask Michael Culligan, who's the CEO of Dublin BIC, to say a few words. Michael, over to you. Thanks, Connor. I'm particularly pleased, actually, as Connor mentioned in the outset, to be joining you from the Guinness Enterprise Centre. Many of you will know it, but not everybody will. Um, just a little background. The centre was originally set up in the late um, 1990s, when there were very few innovation centres or enterprise centres, I guess, in the country. And uh, the world has changed a little bit in that respect. And over the years, the Guinness Enterprise Centre, I guess, is a place where when people came, they always commented on the energy and the life. And we have had many companies come in and start and scale and move on out of here. Um, but a bit like each of you in your own entrepreneurial journeys, you know, we've had a vision for the GEC for the last number of years, which was really to scale it to a totally different level and to really, you know, transform it to a global entrepreneurial super hub. And today, the GEC, we have completed a 10 million project. Prior to the pandemic, it was already the largest single building enterprise center in the country. And we've added two new floors onto it. Um, you know, the original founding stakeholders of the Guinness Enterprise Center were Enterprise Ireland, ourselves at Dublin Business Innovation Center, who managed the center, um, the city, of course, through Dublin City Council and local enterprise office, and of course, the AG or Guinness, who provided the building originally. Um, in the more recent um, expansion of the center, and we'll be formally opening it in about a month's time, um, we have uh, taken a long-term loan from the Ireland Strategic Investment Fund, and that's how the, uh, the expansion has been funded. In summary, the new center will be home to over 800 people. Um, of course, people will be in a slightly more blended fashion now and lots of new technology to enable that. But over a five-year period, it'll support about 1,500 direct jobs. And each of those, of course, uh, results in maybe an indirect job. So the project overall of the Guinness Enterprise Center here is of the order of 3,000 jobs in the heart of inner city Dublin 8, you know, an area that was very deprived but is now transforming over time. So a bit like each of you in your own journeys, you know, the Guinness Enterprise Center has this vision to be globally super hub interconnected. And that's already very advanced with all sorts of programs like university programs that connect um, companies here with global universities in terms of projects, et cetera. Um, so, you know, it's something very innovative, I suppose. When you talk about innovation, people talk about four legs to the stool. Number one, perhaps, is, um, you know, industry. That's startups and scale-ups, which are bound here, of course. And in addition, then interconnecting those with larger multinationals. And that's something that's underway in a serious way in the new expanded GEC. The second area, of course, is, um, you know, academia. And I've already referred to the engagement with the university programs around the world. The third leg to the stool would be citizens and engaging um, with public. And that's happening through companies in here and through various programs. Uh, and the final element, of course, is government. And that's, part, that's evidenced in the Guinness Enterprise Centre through engagement with local government, with the city, and national government through the likes of the Ireland Strategic Investment Fund. We're here this morning to say a few opening words, I suppose, before we meet some really fantastic, interesting companies about the area of innovation. Innovation is often... I guess, kind as something that would be um, creative destruction. It's this idea, Schumpeter would have put it, the economist, out with the old, in with the new, this frisson, this not accepting the current status quo, but always challenging, asking questions about how you can do things better. But innovation isn't necessarily just technological innovation, which is people often think about innovation as something that's technically new. It can be that, it often is that, but innovation can be doing things faster, quicker, better, and often innovation, in fact, is innovation of the business model. And maybe the best way to look at that is to consider a few um, examples. You know, companies like Silver Cloud Help that was headed up by Ken Cahill, they provide a digital platform for mental health to deliver, mental health support to deliver it in a blended fashion. And of course, its time has come even more so, but it was very well advanced prior to the pandemic, already established with the NHS in the UK and the United States of America, and you know has already serviced probably over more than a half a million. So that whole area of digital health is something that's growing dramatically, and I guess the newer um, you know technologies enable that, and there's a greater acceptance. If you see what's happened over the last 18 months, you know things are happening in months that happened in years before that. So the uh, level of technological adoption and acceptance is significant. Perhaps another um, area to touch on in that regard and to you know, bring out the innovation story is a company like LearnUpon, headed by Brendan Naud. The guys operating the 
what would be traditionally termed the learning management systems area. So you'd be familiar with learning management systems yourself if you went to college or went back to college in more recent times, and you know where your lecturers store all of your information, et cetera. That's a learning management system. In more recent years, corporates have started to use learning management systems for delivery of um, upskilling internally in those organizations. So there were solutions in that industry, but I think it would be fair to say they were clunky, they were old, they were large, they were probably a bit inexpensive. Um, Brendan and his colleagues had worked in that industry, so they came up with a solution that was nimble, flexible, strong user interface, strong user experience, probably um, easier to digest in terms of um, pricing and more flexibility, et cetera, and just drew, grew dramatically, evidenced, of course, by significant private equity investment into them. And that all happened before the pandemic, and I can only imagine with the pandemic now and the advancement of them, you know, digital and remote learning, et cetera, how they've grown further. Um, you know, we've touched on healthcare a little bit there, this overlap into, I guess, uh, digital healthcare is a major area, and even overlapping into the, uh, there's a company I think we should keep an eye out for, we've had them before in one of the funding scaling events, and that's Food Marble, um, headed up by Angus, Angus and his team with a super strap line about, um, you know, don't take the guesswork out of what you eat, et cetera. So what we've seen over the last 18 months, folks, I suppose, is this enormous challenge that's come about on the back of the pandemic. But what are the lessons for us as companies and for you as companies out there um, I think a lot of these changes are here to stay. But the big lesson from an innovation perspective for me really is that um, change brings and challenges bring opportunity. And that's back to this um, frisson. So I don't think there's ever been a better time in terms of new opportunities that exist for digital businesses um, going ahead. Um, into, into the future. To take a quick look, if I can change for a moment, maybe from a slightly policy perspective, and you could look at this at a national, but if we start at a European level, and I'm not sure how tuned in you guys are to this, you possibly are fairly well. If you're not, I definitely want to put my hand up high and say you should tune in. You know, at a European level now, it's all about um, the next five, six, seven years are about the green deal, as they call it, which is this whole idea of make it green, make it digital. And in that regard, perhaps of the order of 700 billion euro is earmarked by the European Union to fund programs in those two areas over the next number of years. And that policy approach at a European level will cascade its way down into each of the countries, including here in Ireland. And you know, everything you do as a company needs to be sustainable. People will expect you that, uh, to be sustainable in your business and your suppliers and you as a supplier to other companies. So this is not something that you cannot be involved in. And I think from an entrepreneurial perspective, the great thing is it brings enormous opportunities um, for new for, for new for new direction, uh, etc. So I certainly encourage you to tune to tune um, tune into that. Um, I'm kind of conscious a little bit of time, but maybe one thing I want to bring up a little bit here is one thing we have observed over many many years here is many of the wonderful companies that start and scale their businesses often succeed internationally before they do here domestically at home. And it seems a pity to me in that regard. So we have started a pilot program in recent times of something called the Innovation Exchange in partnership with uh, Skillnet Ireland, my colleague Connor um, is actually leading out on that for us. And the whole idea there is that companies who have solutions for particular markets or verticals, maybe they could tweak them slightly and apply them um, to existing or to, to needs that large multinationals have. So on one hand, we're curating a group of about 100 SMEs, and on the other hand, about 10 large multinationals, and putting these guys together to see if they can help them to transact business. You know, an example of that recently is Connor had um, John Hurley, CTO of Ryanair, on a call with about 40 of the SMEs explaining what these guys want. And you know, we are hopeful that this can lead to something that on from the pilot to a national um, rollout over the next few years. The website is the innovationexchange.ie. The current call uh, is closed, but there will be a new call coming in due course. So do keep an eye on that. In concluding this morning, keeping an eye on my, on, on my time clock here, Dublin Business Innovation Centre, Dublin BIC, has been involved for um, you know, over 30 years at this stage in the whole entrepreneurial area, deeply embedded in it, and that's evidence, as many of you will know, through what we would call the business advisory side, our investor-ready program, 
where um, our team will work with you if you have an idea from a value proposition all the way to your business plan or your deck or your funding um, preparation. And then the second area we're involved in, of course, is funding by running the Business Angel Network on the island. And also we have a new C to Series A venture funds, the R Smart Tech Fund, which is very actively investing um, right now. And of course, then finally, in the area of space, apart from our location in uh, space at Dublin Beacon Bride Street, we're here this morning, as I said at the outset, um, in the Guinness Enterprise um, Center. And you know, I guess our role in life, we would always say, is to empower entrepreneurs to start and scale internationally traded businesses. But really it is to support you, the innovators, and you, the innovators, are the people who create these high quality jobs that allow people to go to college, to set up businesses, and to do the whole thing over again, over and over again. So I think uh, at that, you know, I salute you, and I ask you to hopefully sit back and enjoy um, the entrepreneurs that we would have for the rest of the morning here. Thanks very much, folks. Do reach out if you know anyone that's thinking of starting a business, as always, and we're here to help you. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Um, just one question before mm. I let you go. Michael, you were talking about um, innovation and that gap between the corporates on one side and the, the SMEs on the other side. Maybe just explain what's driving that. What's the cause of that gap, or what are, what are you observing as you work your way through this mm. innovation exchange? Mm. Look, it's, it's a great question, Connor, and I think a lot of it goes to culture, large organizations, the nature of, you know, once you, you have a, um, a solution that meets a need in the market, then what you're about changes a little bit to scaling that and to operations and to standard operating procedures, and you need very, very fixed procedures and structures. And anyone who's ever worked in a large organization will know that the large organization needs to be able to survive if people move on, etc. Whereas on the other hand, if you're a young company in a startup or a scale-up company, company, you've got to do one of two things. You've got to eat somebody's lunch, which is not easy because they don't give it up easy, or you've got to create something totally new. So you're forced by um, the situation to be highly innovative. So I think what's attractive a little bit, I think, for the multinationals is that they can get access to that. But when we're not taught, we also have to recognize the reality here. And the reality is multinationals and large companies, Irish or international, are extremely busy. So just because you have an idea and you want to go and talk to somebody, that doesn't really work that well. So what we're talking about here is we have good scale-up companies who maybe are starting to do well, and they have a solution that perhaps could be tweaked a little bit to meet a need of a multinational. And it's that marriage or bringing those two together. So we think there are benefits for the scale-up company in finding new markets or new routes to market, which could be a new adjacent future vertical for them. But at the same time, there's an advantage and maybe a little less risk for the multinational. They're not dealing with somebody who has an idea. Or they're dealing with somebody with an established solution that can maybe bring win-win or value-add. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, so much for that.